All right, Allison, we want to continue the discussion on 9-11 today because we've got two guests who played very big roles on that very tragic day. Yeah, absolutely. Let's bring in former New York Congressman Peter King. He was in Congress on that fateful day and former acting CBP Commissioner Mark Morgan, who was an FBI special agent deployed to Ground Zero. Gentlemen, good morning. Uh, Congressman, I want to start with you. Tell us about your story. Where were you on 9-11? I was actually in Washington. Uh, my wife was going to be flying up that morning from New York because President Bush was having his first uh, congressional barbecue at the White House that night. So I was driving toward the Capitol, and I guess it was just a few minutes before 9 o'clock. It came over the radio that a few minutes before that, uh, the World Trade Center had hit by a plane. But it, again, it was not a big incident. It seemed to be a small plane. But I called uh, Delta anyway, because my wife's plane was taking off at 8.30 uh, to find you know make sure everything was okay. And they couldn't tell me what happened to her plane. So right away, you start becoming a little bit nervous, but right. nothing like I would have you know, if I'd known this. When I got to my office, uh, everybody seemed calm in the hallways. The cops were saying hello to everyone. But I opened the door of my office and I saw a plane crashing into the World Trade Center. So, you know, they must have this on video wow. from the, you know, the plane. Then I realized I was the second plane. And then wow. after that, the day was uh, finally I tracked my wife down. because she, uh, she was on the runway. We couldn't make any phone calls then. My son worked in the Commerce Department. There was a, uh, a, a, a rumor that a bomb had gone off down there, which it didn't, but all the phones were dead. And my son-in-law worked just a block north of the World Trade Center. But thank God, my family was fine. But after that, I lost mm. really hundreds of friends, neighbors, constituents. And it was just unending funerals for the next six to seven months. Uh, I remember the, the picnic story, Congressman. If you look at that, that famous picture of George Bush getting off Marine One, arriving back at the White House, in the background when he's waving at the cameras, uh, you can see all those picnic tables stacked up. They had to get them off the South Lawn uh, to clear room for Marine One. Uh, that day. But that's another part of the story as well. Mark, good morning. Nice to see you. Um, I know that uh, a few days after the attacks on 9-11, you were deployed to Ground Zero. Tell us your story. Yeah, Rob, I tell you, I was there for, for a, a short period of time. But, you know, when I first got there, the first thing I thought of is, is all the, the images, as horrific as they were, didn't do it justice, Rob. Um, and then the second thought I had was, I couldn't believe that I was actually standing in America. I, I felt like I was in a different place in a different time, maybe in World War II and a and, and city that had been recently carpet bombed. It was just the pictures and words just could not describe what I was seeing uh, where the Twin Towers once stood. And, but at the same time, you know, I was watching that clip from uh, former President Bush and what you said, chills. I was watching it as I get ready for this segment. I, too, had chills because at the same time when I was standing there in this middle of this devastation, this worst uh, attack of our homeland we've ever experienced, I also saw simultaneously that strength and that resolve that that this was not going to impact us, that we were going to overcome this and we were going to find those uh, responsible for that. So I saw both things happen at the same time. Yeah, we, we certainly saw a lot of strength during that time. Mm -hmm. Congressman, New Yorkers, they're resilient. And so was this entire country after this terrible day. What do you remember about the country coming together to unite as one? Well, similar to Mark, I was uh, actually down at Ground Zero, and President Bush uh, made that remark, uh, that uh, again, spontaneous uh, declaration of strength that he made. Uh, actually, uh, that was a good friend of mine, Bob Beckwith, retired firefighter, who was standing with him. And to me, that symbolized the spirit. Think of all those cops, all those firefighters that ran into the building. Suppose they had not done that. To me, that really mobilized the entire country, and that was the uh, unity and the uh, strength that we needed. And again, thank God for them. Thank God for President Bush. I mean, Ed Koch always said every night he went to bed thanking God that, Ed, uh, mm. you know, that George Bush was his president because the leadership that he showed. And really, it was uh, so vital to see. And uh, he was there. And it was, again, totally impromptu. Nobody could have prepared for this. And also Mayor Rudy Giuliani. Yeah. The leadership he provided was just amazing and astounding. It really was. They were It'll the men for that moment. Rudy. Certainly. Uh, Mark, we've got about 20 seconds left. You were at the dump on Staten Island. That's where a lot of this debris was taken. What was that atmosphere like? Yeah, that's the image that's ingrained in my my head forever. It's where, uh, you know, 1.2 million tons of debris from World Trade Center was brought. And, you know, look, you, you saw, you know, crushed uh, first responded vehicles, fire trucks, police vehicles that had been crushed because of the concrete and falling debris. And right. one thing that really stuck out, Rob, was there were these five gallon buckets uh, that were just filled to the brim with personal items of people that died that day. It was uh, it's forever ingrained in my mind. Yeah, actually, the picture behind you, Mark, is uh, the picture we're about to show. We're going to speak to the woman uh, with that flag in just a little bit. Uh, Mark Morgan, Congressman Peter King, thank you so much for joining us and sharing thank your you. stories with us. Thank you.